Hello and welcome to another video on sequences and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the idea of a geometric sequence. Now we've already looked at arithmetic sequences so if we just have a bit of a recap an arithmetic sequence is a sequence that progresses where we add the same amount each time or subtract the same amount each time. So in this sequence here we can see that we're adding on 4 to go from 2 to 6 we're doing the same to go from 6 to 10 we're adding on 4 and likewise to go from 10 to 14 we're also adding on 4 so we're adding the same amount each time which tells us it's an arithmetic sequence and this number that we're adding on each time this is called the common difference now if we have a look at this sequence over here we can see that the first two terms are identical but then the third term instead of 10 we've got 18 so what's going on here well to go from 2 to 6 we said that we were adding on 4 but what we can also say is we can also say that we're multiplying by 3 because 2 times 3 also gives us 6 and the same thing happens here so to go from 6 to 18 we're multiplying by 3 and likewise to go from 18 to 54 we're also multiplying by 3 so instead of adding the same amount each time we're multiplying the same amount each time and that's what gives us a geometric sequence so geometric sequence we are multiplying by the same amount each time and this is called the common ratio so in summary the difference between an arithmetic sequence and a geometric sequence in an arithmetic sequence we're adding or subtracting the same amount each time which is called the common difference and in a geometric sequence we're multiplying or dividing by the same number each time and that is called the common ratio so now you know what a geometric sequence is what I'd like you to do is pause the video and see if you can identify all of the geometric sequences that I've got listed down here. Okay, so I'm assuming you've paused the video now, so let's have a look. Now this first sequence, we go from 7 to 15, well it's quite hard to see what I'm multiplying by, but I can see that I'm adding on 8. To go from 7 to 15, I'm adding on 8, and in fact I'm doing that, that same thing to go from 15 to 23, I'm adding on 8. And again, I'm adding on 8 to go from 23 to 31. So I'm adding on the same amount each time. So this is not geometric. This is an arithmetic sequence. Okay, number 2. Well, to go from 1 to 2, if this were a geometric sequence, I'd be multiplying by 2. Or I could say I'm doubling. And again, I'm doubling to go from 2 to 4. I'm multiplying by 2. And to go from 4 to 8, again, I'm multiplying by 2. So yes, this is a geometric sequence because we have a common ratio, which is 2. Now this next one here, we're getting smaller, but we're still multiplying by some number. We're, we're halving 96 to go from 48, so you could think about it as dividing by 2, or you could think about it as multiplying by 0 0.5. And again, to go from 48 to 24, I'm multiplying by 0 0.5, and to go from 24 to 12, I'm multiplying by 0 0.5. So yes, this is as well a geometric sequence, and my common ratio this time is 0.5. So question number four, to go from negative eight to negative two, what am I doing? Well, I'm taking a quarter, so I'm multiplying by 0.25, or dividing by four, whichever way you want to think about it. But then I'm not doing that to go from negative two to four. So if I were to take a quarter of negative two, that would give me negative 0.5, when in fact, my next number is four. So this is definitely not going to be a geometric sequence. So we could think about what sequence this actually is. And um, I can also see that to go from negative 8 to negative 2, I'm adding on 6. To go from negative 2 to 4, I'm adding on 6. And to go from 4 to 10, I'm also adding on 6. So this is, in fact, an arithmetic sequence. So question number 5, let's have a look. To go from, neg to go from 0 0.02 to 0 0.2, well, I'm just increasing by a scale factor of 10. So I'm multiplying by 10. Uh, again, we're going 10 times as big, so we're multiplying by 10, and then to go from 2 to 20, and multiplying by 10. So yes, this is indeed a geometric sequence, and our uh, common ratio is 10. Now this last one, to go from 3 to negative 9, well to go from 3 to 9, I'm multiplying by 3, but it's negative 9, so in fact I'm multiplying by negative 3. And am I doing the same thing to go from negative 9 to 27? Well yes I am. I'm multiplying by negative 3 because negative 9 times negative 3 well those two negatives when multiplied together they will give us a positive value and likewise I'm multiplying by negative 3 here so this is geometric and this time my common ratio is negative 3 so now you can identify geometric sequences what I'd like you to do for your last task is see if you can continue these geometric sequences 
by identifying the next two terms in each of these sequences. So I've given you the first three terms, so work out what the fourth and the fifth terms are of each of these sequences. Okay, so let's go through this. So the first one, let's go from five to 10, well, we're multiplying by two, so we're gonna do the same thing, multiplied by two for the next term in our sequence, where we're just gonna do 20 times two, which gives us 40, and then the term after that is gonna be 40 times two, which is 80. So for each of these, I think I'll use a different color from my color palette. So to go from 0 0.04 to four, what am I multiplying by? Well, we're moving our decimal point two places to the right, which is the same as multiplying by 100. So I'm multiplying by 100, and that works because four times 100 is also 400. So let's do the same thing. So multiply by 100, so 40 times 100, well, I'm going to add another two zeros on the end, so that gives me 40,000. And if I do the same thing, so we've got 40,000, 400, 40,000, multiplied by 100, I'm adding another two zeros on the end, which gives me 4 million. So the next one, to go from 100 to 50, well, I'm dividing by 2, or you could think about it as multiplying by 0 0.5. And again, I'm multiplying by 0 0.5, so I just need to work out what half of 25 is. So times 0 0.5, that gives me 12.5. And then multiply by 0 0.5 again, or well that gives me 6.25. Okay, number four, let's choose fuchsia for this one. So to go from nine to three, well, I'm multiplying by a third. Go from three to one, I'm multiplying by a third. So a third of one, what is a third of one? Well, that's just one third. And the next one, multiply by one third again. So a third times a third, that gives me one ninth. So what am I doing to go from four twenty sevenths to four ninths? Well, this denominator is getting three times as small. So if the denominator is getting three times as small, that mean, must mean that the value is actually getting three times as big. So I'm multiplying by three. And just to check that, if I do four over 27, if I times that by three, you can see that the three divided by 27, well, that will just simplify to one and nine. Three twenty-sevenths is the same as one over nine. So four over nine, which is what we've got here. So we know that we've got the yeah, correct answer. Let me just rub that off again. So if we do the same thing, we multiply by three, four ninths multiplied by three does give us four over three. And then if we do the same thing here, we multiply by three, four thirds times three, well that will just be left with four. And then do the same thing again, multiply by three, four times three is 12. So hopefully this video gave you a nice introduction to geometric sequences. In the next video, we're gonna look at calculating the nth term of geometric sequences, much like what we have done for arithmetic sequences and also quadratic sequences if you've come across those. I'll see you in the next video.